Hi, I'm the Rick and Rick Turns. And today I'm going to be making this dead blow mallet. Now if you're not familiar with a dead blow hammer or dead blow mallet, it's one where the head has been hollowed out partially and filled with loose shot or some type of loose heavy material like sand, lead shot, something like that. Uh, the advantages of a dead blow mallet are, first of all, you've got more weight right in the head. And second of all, and the reason it's called a dead blow is when you strike something, there's no rebound. It gives you a really solid feel and it doesn't bounce back. There's uh, virtually no vibration coming through the handle, which doesn't really matter when you're hitting something once or twice, but if you were using it all day long, it would be an advantage. And uh, with a wooden mallet in particular, uh, because the head is wood, uh, if you whack a drive center to drive it in the end of a blank, it's not going to damage the end of that drive center. I've got a pretty good sized chunk of maple here. This is kind of soft maple. I think it's probably red maple. I'm going to cut a chunk right out of the middle, right through there. Got about four to five inches of height here. And uh, the finished mallet, I think I want it to be at least three and a half, maybe four inches in diameter. So that'll be the first cut I make there. I'm going to make a cut right along there. I'm going to turn on the dust collector. It's going to be pretty noisy, so I won't talk while I'm doing that. Got ten and a half inches now. I'm just going to mark uh, centers on here because I'll start it off by turning between centers. And this is a plain mallet that I made many years ago for just this purpose. You can see it bounces a little bit, but with the dead blow mallet. It hits and stays. It's about four to five inches right now on one side. I'm going to bring it down around first. Well, that's right on three and a half inches. And I need a tenon on here. That tenon will go into this chuck. So that's quite a bit smaller. And for the handle part, I want it to be about six inches and the head at least three inches. So this is going to be the tenon right there. Good for my tenon size. All right, as you can just see, I am chucked up again. Now I've got uh, one and held in the chuck, and I brought up a uh, essentially what is a cup center. All right, that's just a little bit smaller than my three and a half inches, which is okay. I want three and a half inches at the top, and there'll be a slant down to this way. This, of course, would be uh, turned down to maybe an inch or so. I'm going to cut a slant down like this. It's not going to be much of a slant, really. It doesn't really have to be much. It doesn't really have to be there at all. But uh, all the mallets I've seen have that, and I think it's because of the angle of the striking. When you're striking a chisel or something with your hand, this gives you more of a chance of hitting it square on rather than at an angle.
that's good enough for the moment. Handle's going to be a good bit smaller than that. But now, I'm going to move up here to do the hollowing. Alright, I'm ready to start hollowing this out. And the first thing I'm going to do is just take my uh, drill bit turning tool and take it in about that far. I don't want to go all the way through to the end. Uh, I'm not going to hollow this out real thin. I'm going to leave at least three quarters of an inch on the edges. It is a mallet that's going to be hitting things. If it's too thin, it'll break. Uh, and for a similar reason, I don't want to go too far down to the bottom, although it's still going to have stuff down here holding it. So, drill a hole first. I have the light speed turned down to 600 RPM. Uh, doesn't do all that great when I turn it up faster because it just generates more heat, but it doesn't really cut any faster. So I got my hole going down right about there, and that's good. That's where I want it. So the next thing I'm going to do is to hollow this out using a variety of tools. And the variety I'm going to start off with is this, and I'm going to turn the lathe up to about 1100. That's what happens when you take too big a bite. Knocks it out around. And this is where a lay steady rest would come in handy, but I don't have one. I'll do the camera a little bit so we can get a better shot of this. I'm not going to worry too much about it being out around uh, because it's going to be knocked out around every time I start doing this. And it's only inside, so I'm not really worried about that too much. I do need to be careful to take smaller cuts. And I don't want to make this any smaller. Probably not showing too well, but I am cutting it in at an angle like this because when I make the top piece, the cap here, I'm going to slant it so as I tap it down it will become tighter. I'll switch over to a bowl gouge, see if I can get a little bit faster hollowing here. Sure I've gotten down to the bottom of that hole. Yes, I have. So I don't need to go any further. Yep. Okay, so I just need to open it up a little bit more. Alright, that's good. That's going to be for the plug goes in here and seals in the weight. Now I've taken my half-made uh, mallet out of the chuck. Just going to set a pair of calipers here to the inside dimension. Uh, this is where I'll be putting a plug. And of course this hollow here is where I'm going to pour in a bunch of uh, uh, lead pellets. Or lead shot, actually. Um, now the plug that goes in here doesn't have to be very deep. Uh, maybe uh, three quarters of an inch is all that I'll do. That dimension at the top, and then it's going to be slanted a little bit to match that slant right there. Then I'll put the lead shot in there, put the plug in, glue it in place. Now one thing 
to mention about the plug is the the grain of this piece, as you can see, this is the length of the wood. The grain is running this way. When you cut a plug, you need to cut it so that it's with long grain running this way, as opposed to that way, just to keep the uh, grain you know, oriented in the same way with both the plug and this, so that as they shrink or expand due to changes in moisture, they won't put too much stress on each other. Okay, I've got a block here that I'm going to cut the end plug for this. I've got my caliper set to that, which is where I want it to be. This is going to be just wide enough for it. Now, I don't need, a, obviously, all of that. I'm going to cut off maybe an inch, but uh, a half an inch uh, extending down into the cavity there will be just fine. So I'm going to rough this down around, then I'm going to cut it down to the exact size that I want. You can see it's standing high, but that's okay. I want it to be at this point around over all of this. I've got a bunch of shot here. I don't know if it's lead shot or steel shot. It's like that. Very small gauge. I think that's what it's called anyway. And I've got to put some in the hole here, in the opening, but I don't want to fill it all the way up. I don't want it tight. I want it loose. Okay, that's a little over halfway full. Obviously, I don't have I need for a huge amount of glue here. So I'm just going to put some on the inside, some around this piece, then tap them together. And I'm just going to put glue around the inside. I don't really want to glue the shot down anywhere or get any glue on it. So I want it to be loose and stay loose. Uh, now, I need to recenter this. Uh, just doing it via the chuck isn't quite enough um, because it was out of round already from my previous turning. I'm just, I've got a uh, cup center right in here so I can move this slightly. And I'm just going to estimate the centering based on the how close it comes to the edge of the tool rest and move it slightly. Another good use for a mallet. And I'm just going to use a detail gouge down here.
test fit. That feels pretty good right there. So you can see where my hand is, right about here, right about here. That makes a pretty good grip. Okay. Cut any further down here. I want a little bit of stability here. I want to uh, cut away that stub right there. Sanding is all done. Now this just being a mallet, I'm not going to put a shiny, highly polished finish on it. I don't want it to be too slick. I only sanded it up to 220, but it feels good. So I'm just going to wipe on some uh, boil linseed oil, polish it on a little bit with the lathe running. Don't really have to put this on with the lathe running, of course. I just wanted to try it out. I normally just wipe it on, wipe on a few coats, and call it finished. Let's see if it, polishing it in does any better. Like maybe dry it faster. Yeah, it's nice looking wood with that finish on it. Brings all the grain right out. Okay, feels good. Doesn't feel wet anyway, which is one objective. Get it on there dry. Last thing to do, part it off. All right, I've got the dead bloat mallet finished. I want to just compare it to several other hammers. This is a regular mallet, just wood, no, uh, no loose lead pellet filling inside of it. This of course is just a metal claw hammer, a regular nail hammer that everybody's used. So let's just whack them on this little piece of wood I've got to see how they work. This is the dead blow mallet. I'm going to hold it very loosely in my hand uh, just so that I can see how the head hits. The dead blow mallet hits and stays. As you can see, it didn't bounce at all. Now the regular mallet, unweighted, solid wood, and you can see from the dents on it that I've used it for years. I'm holding it about the same, and it hits and bounces. No big deal, but it's not really as comfortable as using this. Now just to see if it's the weight of the head of the dead boat mallet that keeps him from bouncing, I want to compare it to a regular nail hammer. These two are roughly the same weight. I'm going to hold this loosely in my hand. And as you can see, regular nail hammer, even though it's the same weight, is bouncing quite a bit. Whereas the loose filling of this is absorbing the rebound and absorbing the vibration. Having made this, uh, I really like it. I really like using it more than my earlier one right here. It feels better when you strike something. It uh, just seems to be a little nicer when you're driving in a 
drive center and do the end of a blank. So I think it's worth trying it out. Very simple to make. About the only thing you're going to need is some chunks of wood and uh, some kind of a filler. I used lead shot that I bought many years ago uh, to counterweigh wood turning tool handles. But you could also use BBs, you could use sand. Um, so try it out. I think you might like it. Thank <laughs> you.